All right, welcome in, folks. It is popping off of the Warrior Bowl draft, so I wanted to hop on and show you what we're talking about here. Um, and here's the Warrior Bowl. We'll show you the league settings. It's it's been a fun draft so far. I am currently up. So let me pull up the draft room really quick, as you can see right here. I am up in the nine twelve. Now, my team's been. I've been swinging for the fences here. We got. We got Hurts at the first. We came back with Andrews at the 212. We had the third round in reversal, which a little bit unfortunate, but but the first pick, can't really complain. The scoring settings do massively help out those elite QBs early with the way that they're set up. Um, and I'll scroll down a little bit to show you what I'm talking about right here. Um, we go down to elite scoring. It's 0.4 yards. Four yards, so basically a point for 25 yards. It's four point passing touchdown. 0.25 for passive first downs, two point conversions. It's heavily, has heavily negative scoring. So it's similar to Scott Fishbowl, but there is heavy negative scoring in this. So negative four points for interception, negative two points for pick six. Go down incompletions. You lose half a point for every incompletion, and you gain a quarter of a point for every completion. So, and the big one is the quarterback sacks, negative one. So if you had Justin Fields last year and his 53 sacks, you would have lost 53 points. Now, as you can see, there is some pretty significant rushing in here. For every first down, you get a 0.25, and every attempt, you get 0.1. So that's why I took Hertz, is because you get the rushing bonus. Um, you get he has very few interceptions, very few incompletions. Like, he's ideal for the scoring format. So that's why I took him over Mahomes. You can also take Allen over Mahomes in this format, too. But those are the big three. It kind of drops down. I'm surprised someone took Jefferson over Jackson, realistically, because the Marge she could. Um, the receiving yards, it's tiered scoring for wide receivers and running backs and things like that. So as much as it is great to have those PPR monsters, they it's not as big of a bonus, right? Because wide receivers get a point for reception, tight ends get 1.5 points, running backs get 0.75 points. So interesting. My team so far, we have the three wide receivers. So we got Devonta Smith, Drake London, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. I took JSN just because I want to swing for the fences. Um, usually... I would take other guys. Like, I'd take Deontay over him, a couple other guys, but I just really wanted to go for it. And I don't have any JS in, in redraft this year so far, so that's what I wanted to do. So here's how my roster looks. I need to fill my two flex spots. Um, Yeah, we're going to take James Cook. He's just a stud. I love James Cook, and this is the ideal spot to do it going into the 10th round. I'm still going for the fences there. Where it gets interesting is I'm almost tempted to grab another tight end because there's going to be a run on them. Uh, or I could go wide receivers. I could get trail on. Somebody like Juju is pretty interesting in this format. But you can kind of wait. You see how it kind of falls off at running back here? Like there's James Cook, and then it's just a bunch of guys with serious question marks. The tight ends, it's Dalton, Dulcich, Kincaid. Nobody I feel great about. Schultz has the highest floor of all these guys. But, you know, Higby's down there. He's pretty good. You go on him. Um, the interesting thing is you almost want to take my QB3 here. Because they're starting to be a run on quarterbacks. So I really want to take Pickett or Shroud. Um, if you go by projections, it's Pickett. I feel the safest about him. Because he's going to rush, he's going to appear pretty good. So I'm going to take my QB3 here. Because I have Anthony Richardson, it is a little bit it's a little bit treacherous with Richardson. Now, I could go Tannehill. Tannehill's solid, but there is more concern with him. Um, it's just basically just... I'm not 100% convinced he's going to run this year. So realistically, what I'm going to do is give my RB3 and James Cook. Um, and that fills in the flex spot. And then I'm going to take Tannehill because if we go through the next round, like we'll go to these picks right here. I'm pretty sure I could find another guy who's going to give me similar production. Like this is round 11, 12 range, right? There's a Kane, there's Flowers, there's Johnson, Elijah Moore. All these guys are pretty similar to these guys in this range. So you could go Damian Harris if you wanted to. Um, but... Yeah, I'm going to go pick it in James Cook. I'm going to lock up the QB3 because I have Richardson, and this is not best ball. This is actually managed in the Warrior Bowl. So we're going to tap pick it here, and then we're going to take my guy James Cook and round out the roster so far. So the roster is almost set. It's pretty good. I like, I like where we're sitting. There's a lot of youth on this team. <laughs> Compare this to my Scott Fishbowl team. It's massively different, but there's just a ton of youth on this squad. It's going to be interesting to see how it works out. Like you could see some teams only have one quarterback. 
There's three. There's two teams that only have one quarterback. There's a couple teams that still only have two. So there's going to be a quarterback run. If not by this pick, it'll be by my next pick. But realistically, I knew James Cook was going to be gone. And I felt like I could find these wide receivers a little later on. So I'm fine waiting on the wide receivers. With Andrews, let's be real. I'm not starting anybody over Andrews unless he gets hurt. But I'll probably come back with a wide receiver and a tight end realistically in the next range of rounds if those guys are still there. We saw Burks just went. I'm not super high on Burks this year. It's just tough, that passing offense. So as much as I think he's a good player, just not really interested in him. Because, like, I can get, you know, Juju down here. It really does start to fall off. It's kind of these top six, seven wide receivers here. And then there's a decent amount of running backs. But he gets Khalil Herbert, Samaj P. Ryan, Devon A. Chain, like all these guys. No one really stands out. Rashad Penny, Elijah Mitchell, contingent upside, Brian Robinson. He gets a little boost in the scoring format. So there's plenty of guys where I really just wanted to get the QB3 because I had Richardson. Now, if I had someone like a Prescott or a Watson or a Goff or a Tua, Gino, someone that I was a little bit more confident in their floor, I would have pushed quarterback a little bit further. But because I have Richardson and this is a super flex league, that's why I took him. So just give you a heads up where we're standing with this. Um, I wanted to thank you all for coming in, checking out the Warrior Bowl. It's been really fun. I hope everybody who's doing the Warrior Bowl is very much enjoying it. Our, our league's been a blast. Our... Basically, our like our pace has been pretty good for the most part. If we go to Warrior Bowl ADP, I'll show you why that's pretty cool. So if you go to warriorbowl.com slash ADP, you can check out where they're at. Oh, I misspelled it. That's why. There we go. So yeah. So if you go and you are unsure on the Warrior Bowl, which a lot of people are, it's unique scoring, you can go check your ADP, right? So it shows the earliest, the latest, times picked for these players. Obviously, the top guys are going to pick more. You scroll down, you see how this goes on 49, something like that. So um, I was in the ninth pick, so 9 times 12. We were right around 100. That's what pick we were at to kind of show you guys where the pick range. David Montgomery was gone. You could – Dalvin Cook. Friar has gone. Addison just went. There's Dotson. Burks just went. Um, I took Cook a little bit ahead. Uh, interesting that Stroud is going that early. Uh, pick it was 93, so it's a good value pick compared to this. I am kind of bummed I did not get Deontay. I don't know where Javante went. I'm curious, actually. Where did Javante go? Was he still available? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure someone took Javante. Yeah, somebody took him the seventh. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wild. But, yeah, I'm I'm happy with the team. Um, as you can tell, this is more of an upside build where I have London, I have Swift, I have JSN. <laughs> I got Richardson. We're swinging big with this team. So... If you're going to go for it sometimes, you just go all the way for it. With Hertz and Andrews, I have super high floor with those guys. I'm not too worried. Then we start taking our big swings. We got Brees Hall, even if he's out first part of the year. Not too worried about it. At least second half play for me. So we just want to get somebody in the later round. Someone such as Samaj P. Ryan. You know, these grinder backs who are going to see work. Um, not Rashad Penny. He's too injury prone. But even Damon Harris, uh, you know those type of guys where they're going to see volume and they'll play. Cause realistically I just need someone in the early. So if it comes back to me, I'm going to target P Ryan. He's the ideal early build. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Javante manager takes him, but you know, or I could just keep swinging big, something like a cane um, and go down the list. And you could fill out these running backs later too. You can get a Zeke. He's going to sign somewhere. You get, you know, McKinnon, Kareem Hunt. There's all these guys down later on where you can target running backs. So, yeah, just kind of throwing you my thought process with the Warrior build and how it's going. Now, if you will take a look at the Scott Fishbowl Mirror Draft, which is actually pretty cool. We'll go into this one. It's It happened the same day. It's not going as quickly, but the scoring is a little bit different. It's It's been fun. So we have we have Herbert. I got Richardson in this one as well. <laughs> I just went for Richardson both times. With the scoring format, it heavily... Like, I don't know why Fields went below Burrow in this, this. He shouldn't have. Because the rushing settings are absurd in this scoring format. So if you go to League, and this is the Mirror League, it's very similar to Scott Fishbowl. That's a little bit different. Now look at rushing. So for every yard, they get similar. For every first down, they get a full point. And they get .25 for every rushing attempt. So if you have a scrambly quarterback, if you have someone like Lamar or someone like Fields, they get a massive boost in the scoring setting. And it is six-point passing touchdowns. So if you have... 
someone such as Lamar, who goes off what he did in 2019, he's literally going to win you the league. That's something Burrow cannot do in this scoring setting, like just because he doesn't run like Lamar, right? Now, obviously, Burrow has a super high floor, and he's a very, very good quarterback. But if you're really trying to win the Mirror League, which realistically I think you should be doing, I think you should just be swinging for someone such as Lamar in the scoring settings. Um, that's why I was surprised to see Richardson fall to the third. I was like, in this scoring setting, absolutely, I got to do it. Um, as you can see, I have Tyler Lockett queued up. I don't think he's going to make it back to me. Um, but I rounded out my wide receiver core. The team is a lot older in this build. Uh, I got Andrews in both builds. We got Jameer, and then it's just old guys. Keenan Allen, DeAndre Hopkins, Debo Samuel, all those guys. It's been This one's been a fun build. You can click on teams and see what they're targeting, right? But with where we're at in this one, it's a little bit earlier. So you have guys, Pittman, Cook, you know, all those players and such like that. Sorry, um, I got a little bit of low blood sugar, so I'm kind of all over the place right now. But this is the Mirror League. It's it's been a blast. It's it's best ball. So you t attack it a little bit different than you do manage leagues, right? Because best ball, you're not worried about floor at all. So this is why, in this league specifically, Richardson should have gone higher. Fields should have gone higher. Any one of these currently quarterbacks, Watson, like you should boost all these guys up because that rushing QB upside is well worth it. And like Kyler in the fifth, like, I don't, I don't see why teams are doing that. Um, Daniel Jones to uh, like, yeah, it's just, it's interesting how it's best ball, but people aren't really treating it differently, but it, these guys are all kind of going in the same spots. They're going in the warrior bowl, even though the scoring is different, but you'll see in this one, Gibbs was at the fifth and I was like, you know what? Let's go for it. Um, I think, you know, it's well worth the shot. So this is kind of where we're at in the Warrior Bowl. Or sorry, the Scott Fish Bowl. Compared to the Warrior Bowl. It's a little bit different build. I went a lot older. <laughs> um, so yeah, just letting you know. Sometimes you have to play the draft the way it goes. And obviously I prefer some... You can see some of these guys like Andrews. He's been on a lot of my redraft teams because he keeps falling into that middle round two range. And I'm usually picking there. So Andrews is a guy I'm targeting pretty much everywhere. He's just... He's incredible. But it's a heavy tight end boost in this league too. So... That's why you see Kelsey go 1-1. One, one. But the difference between Kelsey and Andrews <laughs> should not be a round and a half. Like, that's just – that's absurd to me. But you can see how once Andrews goes, no one takes a tight end to the fourth round, which is interesting. I don't know why. But with the boost in scoring, I just don't understand why people would not take them earlier. So if we go to league, we go to scoring. And, yeah, this is on the desktop, so it's not as easy to navigate and read, but – it's a full point per tight end reception boost. It's just, it's wild. Like, I just don't, I don't get why people aren't drafting them. And it's also, like, a point for first downs for tight end. So, they get, for every first down catch they get, that's four points. Four points out the end. It doesn't even include the yards. If you get a 10-yard first down catch, that's five points. That's ridiculous. So, tight ends are massively versed in this format. It's, Yeah. Like people should be drafting tight ends earlier. If I if I get the chance, I'm absolutely smashing fire booth next round. That's just that's too good a value in the freaking eighth. I like, think what are we doing here, folks? Um, yeah, and Waller in the sixth. That's great value. I realistically I could have taken Pitts. I just I didn't want to push running back, so I was tempted to take Pitts there. I definitely don't want Kittle. Um, I think Kittle's very good, but the situation kind of sucks. But anyway, this is where we're at. So. Thank you all for stepping in and seeing where we're at. And we'll keep you updated on both the, the Scott Fishbowl Mirror League and the Warrior Bowl as we go along to, you know, see how it progresses for us. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And, yeah, thanks for stopping in the Rancid Fantasy Football Fanatic. I am your host, Jesse Moeller, a.k.a. jmoller 5 You can find me on all the social media platforms, jmoller 5 Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, which we're on right now, right? We got Facebook threads, all the fun places. That's what it would be. So yeah, thanks for stopping in. We'll see you later.